Hey, what's up, everybody? Come on in to the Periscope. Come on in, come on in. I got a great, 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 great topic that I want to discuss for you guys today. So come on into the Periscope. <clears throat> Hope you guys are doing well, man. Today we're going to talk about daily attractions, man. Coming from First John, I believe. I was on my way home from work, man, and God really dropped. What's up, little pap? God really dropped um, something into my heart that I really want to share with you guys. So go ahead and get everybody into this Periscope. Hit Bouncer White to the right. What's up, Kiki Adore? Get hit Bouncer White to the right and invite everybody else into this Periscope. Share on Twitter. Share on Facebook. Share with your friends down the hall. What's up, Barbara? What's up, Tineek411? <coughs> Excuse me. Kanisha Janae. Come on in. Blessings. Blessings to you all. Go ahead and invite your followers out. And for those who are brand new to Periscope, first off, I want to say thank you guys for getting me to a million hearts. I don't know what I get, probably don't get anything, but I greatly appreciate you guys sowing your seed into good ground. I'm <laughs> just joking. Little, little little preacher humor. What's up? You watching from Charlotte? Hey, so thank you guys for contributing with the hearts, man. If you want to contribute, man, you can give two mics, you can give 2,000 hearts, whatever you feel led to give. Keep tapping the screen. Just keep tapping the screen. Work those finger muscles, man. Your fingers got muscles in it, too. Your finger muscles need to be strong. You never know what you might have to grip one day in life. But let's get right into today's topic. <clears throat> hey, what's up, everybody? New York City, what's up? Let me know where you guys watching from. Let's keep up with tradition. Let me know where you guys watching from. Nah, I ain't had a bullberry biscuit in two months now. I'm doing good. New York in the building. Where are you guys watching from? Jacksonville, Florida, Chicago, VA, Chicago, Brooklyn in the house, Chicago, man, everybody from Chicago, they didn't start a small group over there, watching from the Bronx, what up Bronx, what up Maryland, <clears throat> excuse me, what up Kansas, what up Alabama, what up Columbia, what up LA, good thing, coach, Chi-Town, Chicago, strong, Texas, what's up, Naples, Florida, Los Angeles, ATL, Chicago, I watch it, Today. Excuse me, guys. Let's get right into it, man. <clears throat> the reason why I titled this Daily Attractions is because many of us are unaware of the subtle things that we allow into our lives that we draw to ourselves. What's up, Birmingham, UK? What's up, UK? Many of us are, uh, uh, many of us do not, or many of us are unaware of what we draw into our life. I say before you attract, subtract. Before you attract things in your life, make sure you're subtracting those subtle pulls, those subtle uh, 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 <clears throat> things that are pulling things into your life that don't deserve to be there. A lot of people are surrounded by things that do not deserve to be in their life. They're giving anything and everyone access to their heart that do not deserve access. They're allowing different types of music, different types of influences, different types of engagements <clears throat> around their life and is drawing the wrong things to their life, which is, which if you don't understand, say, uh, satanic warfare, you missing out or you're, or you're engaging in a battle that you may not be strong enough to handle. So what happens is when many people are engaged in things and they begin to engage in selfish things and these three types of things begins to draw things into their life they have a deadly consequence to it. Be very careful the choice that you make in life because every choice you make has a consequence. Consequences are not always bad. Sometimes consequences are good. So what happens in life when people are unaware of what they're drawing or attracting to them, they begin to incubate things that are deadly to them they begin to incubate things that are endeavoring to destroy them. And the devil loves ignorant, naive individuals. He loves when people are unaware, ignorant, and naive of his, of his device. That's why the Bible is clear when it says, do not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Because when you are ignorant of his devices, you are basically saying that anything goes in my life. And right now, you could have some things in your life that's destroying you. Right now, you could be surrounding yourself with things that are destroying your family, destroying your purity destroying your faith, destroying your relationship with God because you are allowing these things in your heart lust, pride, envy, jealousy all these different things to draw things into your life drawing the wrong people, drawing the wrong opportunities drawing the wrong situations into your life and these things are destroying you life was designed to be preserved. Life was meant to be taken care of. And many people are neglecting the number one thing that God gave them to, 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 to handle. And that's their life. And so what happens is you begin to bring the wrong person. The wrong situations. And all these different things in your life. And they're draining you. Why are you allowing your life to be surrounded by leeches? <clears throat> 
Why are you allowing your life to be surrounded by individuals that do not care about you? These deadly attractions destroy. And I'm going to talk about this from 1 John. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. These three things are the top three deadly attractions in our lives. Let's look at lust of the flesh. Hunger is a very dangerous thing. When a person is hungry and a person has gone without and their soul is desiring something, that hunger will lead them to perverse things. Meaning, when a person is feeling, has been persuaded into thinking that you deserve this, that you deserve, forget what God has to say about it, forget what you may feel about it, you deserve this in your life, and they begin to build an appetite for things that are perverse. The devil loves to build an appetite. The devil loves for you to build an appetite for things that are not good for you. So what happens is, you begin to build an appetite for lustful things. You begin to build an appetite for your flesh, and your flesh will try to confuse you, and making you you believe that you deserve this thing. You owe it to yourself. And so what happens is when that carnal thing called lust inside of you begins to grow and that lust begins to grow. See, the thing about it is let's talk about lust for a minute. Lust is not a, I mean, <clears throat> lust is a perverted desire. There's nothing wrong with desire. There's nothing wrong with wanting things. There's nothing wrong with desiring things. But when that desire becomes an idol, when that desire becomes lustful, that desire begins to morph into something deadly, which is called lust. Lust is, just, is not just sexual. Give me one second. Lust is not just sexual. Ladies and gentlemen, understand me. Lust, by definition, is an overbearing desire for something. When you have an overbearing desire for something, you basically saying that I need this thing above everything else, that I need this thing to satisfy me. So what happens is when you have a sexual type of lust, that lust says, I need sex now. Love, that type of lust that you are building up inside your heart has no love contents to it. So what happens to a person who's building up lust through watching pornography, building up love lust by incubating in environments of promiscuity when that lust begins to develop you build artificial things and God never intended for you to love things beyond its ability to sustain you when you begin to love something above or beyond the, the, its ability to sustain you you begin to make that thing God because whatever you plug into becomes your source and if that source fails you fail with it so when you understand that he's a source by which his spirit wants to lead you it'll put your spiritual aid for yourself you begin to attract things that are deadly you begin to attract the wrong women you begin to attract the wrong men you begin to attract the wrong opportunities. You attract who you are. And so the devil wants you to be per uh, uh, perverse from the original image. He doesn't want you to bear the image of God. He doesn't want you to bear holiness. He doesn't want you to bear purity. He doesn't want you to bear integrity. He doesn't want you to bear character. He wants you to bear the perverse elements of these different things because he understands when you become perverted, you will draw and attract perverted things. What are those things that surround your life right now? What is your flesh desiring? It is your responsibility to kill your flesh every day. You should not allow your flesh to live one moment. Now, what is your flesh? It is your carnal man that still tries to live. Any, if any man be in Christ is a new creation. Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. What new creation means, it means that this which you who you become never existed. That through the Spirit of God's regenerating power, you become new. You become a new version of yourself. At that moment, two individuals or two beings are endeavoring to live. Your carnal man and your renewed man. Every day you're gonna to have to fight which one you whichever one you feed flourishes. If you feed your carnal man, you feed your carnal person, that individual lives. If you feed your renewed man through reading God's word and renewing your mind through God's word, when you begin to do that, you let your renewed man live. But if you let that carnal man live, he or she will begin to bring things into your life, will begin to attract things in your life that are deadly. Before you attract anything, subtract anything that doesn't belong to God. Before you attract a woman, before you attract a man, before you attract the opportunity, soul search your heart and ask yourself, God, what is it that thing inside of me that I need to subtract out of my life? What is that thing in my life I need to remove? Because I do not want my flesh to be dominant. 99.9%, .9%, if that's too high for them, about 90% of Christians are allowing their flesh to dominate them. They're allowing their flesh 
to rule them. They're allowing their flesh. And you wonder why God doesn't use us in America, ladies and gentlemen. We are so carnal. We are so self-centered. We are not living by the commission. We're not even following his mission. We're not even endeavoring to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and spirit. We're not endeavoring to love others as we love ourselves. We do not live be by the principles. And many people are working for forgiveness, but they're not working from forgiveness. It's a big difference between working for forgiveness as works righteousness. You cannot work to you cannot work to perfection because perfection is over. You got to work from forgiveness. Don't work to forgiveness. You are already forgiven. When a person knows they have been forgiven, there's a certain weight that comes upon them. There's a certain uh, <clears throat> righteous burden that comes upon them because they understand I don't deserve it. But this loving God says I do. And this loving God pursue me. So I'm not going to allow my carnal man to live because that carnal man is deadly. That carnal individual is, is outrageous in his thinking. It's unethical. It's illogical. It's emotional. I got to make sure I stay in the river. I got to make sure I stay in the vein. I got to make sure I stay with God because if I stay with him, I will let my, or it being with God would allow my renewal side that it connects to something deadly on the outside. Your greatest tools, whether whether vision as far as is not actually tangible, if you can see it, having the ability to grasp. The sad thing about it is the people that are blind physically are probably are can probably see more than the people who can see. See, blindness is not just a physical element; it's a spiritual element. And what happens is many people are blind spiritually. Many people are blind spiritually. They cannot see what's in front of them. They cannot see the the. the they cannot being able to see beyond the physical is called discernment. Being able to discern a moment, knowing for a fact that this thing is not beneficial to me is proof that you are mature. Being able to say no to something good for something better shows sight of maturity. But what happens in life, many people get so caught up in the lust of their eye, they begin to say, well, you know what? If I see it, I can have it. Listen, be very careful with enticements. Be very careful what you see. Ask God to give you discernment because the same dude, listen, many people are still falling for the same tricks because they get so caught up in a person's suits and versus seeing a person's fruit. They get so caught up on how a woman looks instead of examining her fruit. The Bible says you know them by their fruit. You don't see their fruit physically, right? You got to be able to say, God, show me their fruit. Let me be observant. Help me not to see things and desire things from my eyes that are not beneficial to me. And what happens is when you have a perverted type of eye, you have an envious eye. You have a jealous eye. You have a discontent eye. When your heart is discontent and your heart is jealous and your heart is envious, it begins to draw things through its sight. So when you begin to see your girls getting married, you start getting lonely and talking about, I got to go get somebody because I don't want to be, I don't want to be looked as, as a person with out. Listen, I'd rather have nobody, no money, no situation is still progressing in things of God than to be progressing in things of the world and don't have anything that comes with the things of God. And many, and when you do not see through the lens that God wants you to see through, you will begin to attract things through the lust of your eye. And last but not least, last but probably the most deadliest is pride of this life. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to remember you're a pilgrim passing through if you're a believer. This is not your home. Many people are so prideful of this life. Pride is one of the most unattractive things. Pride is one of the most ugly things on the planet. Pride says, I deserve it. Pride says, I got my degrees. I am intellectually strong. I don't need God. And I am going to be my own king because people really don't want to go to heaven because they want to be their own God. And the reason why many people don't want to see the real God because they're so content and so caught up in being their own God. And pride will cause you to be so distraught. Pride at the end will cause you to be so fallen to the point to where you'll try to hoard for yourself in this life. You'll be getting two or three cars, two or three houses. You will try to obtain all type of opportunities and all types of statuses, all to love with God. Because when you know that at home it is better, that it's better at home, you'll say, you know what, God? I can't wait to see you. Be very careful for these three daily attractions. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. Jesus himself was tempted in the garden 
<clears throat> in the garden in the wilderness is that the devil tried to offer him uh, to, to turn stone into bread, lust of the flesh. He offered him to take him on a high mountain to be able to show him the kingdoms of the world. And he said, look at, look at it with your eyes. Like if you jump off this cliff and the angels come and save you, look at you can get from zero to a hundred real quick. You can get from being uh, unknown to known real quick, lust of the eye. He also told him, if you will bow down me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world, pride of this life. God said, the devil loves to get you from where where you are to where you need to be quickly. He wants you to get you from where you are to where you know you're too immature to handle too quick. God is like molasses. God takes his time. God is slow because God cares about development, right? And what happens, the devil says, get to marriage as quickly as possible. Get to companionship as quickly as possible. Get to the money as quickly as possible because he knows even, even though you get it, you won't be able to keep it because character keeps what you pursue. But when you're immature, you go after it after your own lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life, you will find out you was empty in the process. That's all I got, man. I was rambling. I was talking. But I had to get that word up off of me. Uh, I don't see any more comments, man. Any questions before I go? Any questions before I go? I don't know, but the numbers keep jumping up. That was really good. Thank you. You're welcome. You're right on time. I'm glad. Listen, kill that flesh. Pursue God. Hold on to him like never before. Don't get so caught up on your flesh. Man, kill that hunger. I told people on, uh, on uh, my Periscope maybe a few days ago, there's someone that came in my life. I try to tell people, man, be very careful, man. Don't allow your body to be so hungry. So, so full of hunger that it leads you to perversion. If you keep food away from a person long enough, they'll eat their child. Hunger is a dangerous thing. But the Bible talks about what Jesus at the at the uh, well with the uh, with the woman at the well. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the night. Beard is getting better. And she's Christian, but I've been praying for God to reverse me if she's the one. All you got to do, man, is put that put that young lady on the shelf and let God confirm it. I need positive report. Well, Father God, I pray right now for Beauty B. Bell right now, Father God. You are already, you are already in July 11th. You are already in place to meet her need. Father God, I pray, Lord, you give her a peace that surpasses all understanding that's able to keep her heart and mind through Christ Jesus. God, I pray right now as I stand in agreement with this young lady, Father God, that you will sustain her, that you'll keep her, that she'll get a positive report on July the 11th. I believe by faith. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Listen, stay, stay in faith. Jesus told us person that was sick, he said, it was your faith that made you whole. Don't know if I should leave a friendship with my ex. Listen, is it, is it drawing you to God or is it drawing you away from God? If it's not, you owe, you owe that young man nothing. If he ain't your husband, you owe him nothing. Um, but sometimes you got to make sure that hey, not all friendships are best friendships. Some friendships are meant to be distant. But you got to ask yourself, count the cost of that. God bless you. No problem. You're welcome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long day at work. I wanted to do this Periscope real quick for you guys, man. I just felt compelled to do it. Why do I keep attracting Christian men active in a church that want premarital sex? Why? Listen, man, all you got to see, you may not, you, you may not, sometimes you attract things that's just not you. But what you got to understand is that, look, if this is not me, I don't have to accept them. And it's so sad as a lot of Christian men that wants that kind of sex, man. If that, man is, if that man compromises his relationship with God, he's going to compromise you. He's going to compromise yours. Love yours. Love yours. Who, sung, who did that song, Love Yours? I forgot. Yeah, I'm going to keep these messages going, man. I'm going to keep them going for you guys, man. I've been going for about three or four weeks. J. Cole, yeah. Yeah, focus on your walk with God, man. It is, it is um, his presence is what gives you the fullness of joy, man. Listen, I'm not distracted by a lot of different things. I got books to write. I got stuff to do. I got periscopes to do. I got people to reach. I got places to go. Um, you just got to be careful, man. Not all, not all bad music. Not all good music. Hold on. Not all music is bad. So uh, you got to be careful what you listen to. How do you know when you have a real friendship? You know you have a real Christian friendship when that friendship is edifying you, 
it's encouraging you, it's, it's sharpening you. If that person is sharper but gentle, you got to have a sharp and gentle friend. You, you hear me? Sharp but gentle. You need someone that's going to sharpen you to being better, but gentle enough to hold you when, you when you're down. You don't need a person that's going to be sharpening you when you need them to hold you. Be, be very careful. Don't make the opposite sex hold you. But what I'm trying to say is that they got to be sharp enough to make you stronger. They got to be wise in a certain area. They got to be able to push you forward. If they're pulling you instead of pushing you, that's a bad friendship. You just got to be careful. You just got to be careful. Best ways to limit negative social media influence without isolating yourself. Isolating yourself is not a bad thing. Isolating yourself is not a bad thing. Focus. When you isolate yourself, you got to be productive in your isolation. Oh, hear, that, hear me, hear me. You got to be productive in your isolation. Isolation with no, with no productivity leads to loneliness. You begin to have a false perception or a false perspective on your season. So when you isolate yourself, you got to be able to say, you know what, God, you and me, and I'm going to work on me. I'm going to develop me. But when you are unproductive in your isolation, it turns to loneliness, it turns to fear, it turns to envy, it turns to jealousy, it turns to discontentment, and you begin to want everybody else but Jesus. But when you know that Jesus is your strength, that what he did for you was sufficient for you, you will be able to say, God, what, 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 what business venture you want us to pursue? What ministry endeavor do you want me to start? You'll be too busy to be idle. And so what you got to do is if social media is taking up productivity time, it's nothing wrong with going online and, 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 and doing things and watching and making sure you keep up with your friends and posting motivational things. But you got to be able to say, is this keeping me from growing in God? Is this keeping me from getting to the money? Come on now. He's the Bible says he'll teach your hands how to profit. Is this keeping me from listen? People get mad at God. God, why won't you give me money? Stop asking God to give you money. Ask God to give you an idea. Ideas are worth more than money. And a good a God idea can sustain you. So what I'm trying to say is there a slothful spirit? There is. You got to be very careful. Some some slothful um, 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 personalities are birthed from, from their environment, are birthed from parents, is birthed from what they've seen, and some of it could be demonic. They know for a fact that if you get focused and you get right to what you need to get to, you're going to get things done. You got to be able to say, you know what, God? Listen, God demands hard work. Just because you're a Christian don't mean that God don't want you to work hard. I works hard. I gets it in. Because I understand the universal laws. I understand if you work hard at it, if you pursue it, if you do it in excellence. If you Listen, Christians are required to work hard, to do things in excellence, and to, I forgot what other, other thing I said. A, per, a Christian has to make sure they do things in excellence. They got to make sure they are faithful. They got to make sure they're diligent. They got to make sure they work hard, man. Because you learn so much about yourself when you work hard. Giving God clip art. Giving God half done flyers. Listen, if your stuff is not as dope as the world, don't put it out. Save your money. How do you manage your job at the Y and being a coach both for God's glory? Listen, man, I understand. What I'm trying to say is, is that, listen, it is not easy, but it has to be done. If a man don't work, he don't eat. And your boy likes to eat. I got to work. I got aspirations. I got goals. I got things I got to get in place. I also got to make sure that that um, that I learn from where I'm planted. Not all jobs, even though they may feel bad, sometimes the bad jobs are the best jobs. The bad jobs are the best jobs. The jobs that you don't feel comfortable at, the jobs you don't like, are the best jobs because they're teaching you patience. They teach you endurance. They're teaching you to do to be excellent even in bad situations. Not bad as in in bad with the money or bad business. We're talking about situations about about nurturing, growing you. Sometimes God is hiding you at that job to keep you. Because listen, if God didn't have me at the Y, I'd be out here chasing the world down. Chasing the world down prematurely. You know them young, young brothers or young girls that be full of zeal, talking about we're going to take the world back for Christ? Don't understand these principalities really about that life? Them principalities looking at you like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> Ooh, Satan, look at her. She, 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 loves, she loves God. And then as soon as that test hits you in the jaw, you, done, you discombobulate it. Sometimes God says, go sit there a while, go work there a while, go be there a while, and watch what you become. Watch who you become. And I still got to coach you guys because I love you. At the end of the day, I have a goal. There's things I got to get done. There's things that I want to do. And you got to be relentless. I'm at this thing for seven years, man. 
seven or eight years. Have I toured the world world yet? No. Have I made a million dollars yet? No. But I've touched a lot of lives in the process. I'm glad you love the scopes, man. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. Love you too, man. All right, guys. Got to take care of this body. I got to be at work tomorrow. Oh, man, I love you guys, man. That's why I periscope. Y'all y'all, y'all are the true disciples. The rest of the people is a crowd. You guys right here? Mm-hmm. The sheep. How did you handle the absence of your father? I'm dealing with it right now, and it's kind of not easy. Okay. Good question. With a father and minimum wage without connections. Leave my... Okay, good, good, good. Two questions, I'm going to go. Listen. God removed my dad out of my life at one of the most vulnerable stages of my life when I was a child. Be very careful who you allow in your life. God is very cautious about the people who surrounds his children when they're developing. Because whoever is developing you can alter your development. So my dad is a great guy. He just wasn't the best for me at that season of my life. Right now, I used to be upset with God. Like, God, why'd you take my dad? God, why you removed him? God, what's up? Yo, God, man, nobody passing me the ball at the free throw line. Nobody's playing catch, right? I had went through my woe is me stage, but as I got older in my faith and in maturity, I began to realize that if my father was in my life at that moment, I wouldn't be a preacher today because whatever a man sees, he becomes. So God replaced my dad with him. He replaced him with him. So what happens is, is that he began to show me that, that, that I can be a man without my father because God became the replacement. And the beautiful thing about God, even though God removed my father, he re, reunited us. Back in 2010, me and my dad went to Nigeria for the first time. Me and him shared a stage. He introduced me to preach. And just last summer, I was able to I was able to lead my father into salvation. So you never know what God is up to. God, nothing catches him off guard. You may not have your father in your life, but God may be using you later down the road to reach your father. If the, it don't matter if your father's dead. It doesn't matter if your father's on crack. It doesn't matter if your father got four or five baby mamas. It don't matter. If you stay with God who's your ultimate father he may use you to reach those people in your life so I understand it hurts it hurts because you're missing a big void right now I'm still paying the consequences of not having a father I'm learning by default I'm learning by trial and error error I didn't always have people a man to go to and get advice but thank God God has surrounded me now with my father who is actually a good man and with other men that's shaping me now you may feel the void now, but if you embrace the Father, He'll fill that void for you. Also, for the young man or young lady who asked a question about leaving your job with no connections, um, why does God hire some people and have others work their ministry as they grow? Uh, let me get to your question. I'm thinking to make a periscope how I got delivered from sexual addiction. Yeah, do a periscope, bro, even though your mother and father forsake you. God, listen, though they, though they forsake you, you know, that makes some scriptures. But to the brother... Or the young lady who asked me that question in regards to um, leaving your minimum, minimum wage job. You got to be wise. Use wisdom. And listen, if, you, if, 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 if that job is providing, like if you have no wife and no kids, if you don't have uh, no responsibilities and you actually can take that risk, do not take risk. Take calculated risk. Count the cost of everything. If that minimum wage job is taking care of your necessities, you got to make sure, I, I call it 80-20. Make sure you leave room 20% to be creative and 80% anchored in the job. 80% anchored in the job means that you're still being sustained. It means you're still being taken care of. It still means you got food on the plate, you got lights on, you got clothes. That's 80%. But spend 20% of that effort and time. Get 20% of that money, 10% of that money, 5% of that money, and begin to invest in your creativity. Be able to invest in your ministry. Be able to invest in your business. But do not put... Don't jump off the bridge going 100% deep into something that's not paying you right and that's not compensating you. And don't worry about not having the connections. God will bring the connections in his due timing. In the meantime, prepare yourself for that. Many people have great ideas, but they're not prepared for success. They want success, but not prepared for success. Success comes with burdens. Ask any famous person. They got millions of dollars. They got to deal with a thousand stalkers. They got a billion something dollars, but they got they got so much stuff they got to worry about. Blessings comes with burdens. That's why God breaks you so that you can be built stronger to be able to, to burden the burden. Powerful. Listen, he breaks you 
to build you stronger so that you can be able to handle the blessings because blessings comes with burdens. A blessing in the form of a wife comes with a burden. The blessings in the form of a husband comes with burdens. The blessings as far as a million dollars comes with burdens. That's prep you preaching. There's preparation for everything. And when you master that and you understand that, if you can master patience and, and be relentless at being prepared, the world is yours. Was that Tupac? Biggie? The world is yours? Diddy? Not sure. But the world can be yours. He's a God of order. Decency and order. You're right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. What time is it? I'm going to put this on YouTube tonight. Last question. Why does God hire some for a time, have others work their ministry as they grow? Um, it just depends. The Bible talks about, uh, when he talks about the word being sown on good ground. This is my last one. I'm going to get out of here. Um... Though she says some will be planted on hard soil, some will be planted on thorny ground, some will be planted on stony ground, and some will be planted on good ground, right? No, you're welcome. And what happens is when it's when the word of God is planted on good ground, he says some will bring 30, some will bring six, some will bring a hundredfold return. Based the Bible says in Mark, I think Mark 4, it says based upon their ability. Now, some people have greater gifts have greater anointings. Like right now, <clears throat> I know I'm called to a global international ministry. You know why? Because I got people watching all over the world. See, you know where you... So you got to understand, you got to ask yourself, what's my bandwidth? You're welcome. You're welcome. And you're welcome. You got to ask yourself, what's your bandwidth? You may not be able to handle 20 people. You may not be able to handle 20,000. Some can handle 20,000. Some can only handle 20. And sometimes God hides his... Listen, 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 listen. I know this from experience. Listen to me. Listen. Come close to the screen. Listen to the coach. I am hidden. I can preach circles around half these dudes. They got hundreds of thousands of likes. I can probably outdo them. I can probably outconnect with people that more than them. I, I, I probably can, but I'm hidden. I'm not called for this time. I'm called for the end times. I'm called for when all hell breaks loose. I'm that joker that's going to have to be there help cry, cry, helping you guys through these tough times. I'm not built for the glory days. I'm built for the for the tough days. I'm built for that. And sometimes the greater... Hmm? You can't be famous and be bald? Yeah, you never know, bro. But basically what I'm trying to say is that the greater the anointing, the greater... The time of hiding you have to go through. There are certain people that got ministers right now getting it in. All kinds of stuff. But listen, when it's time to get Osama bin Laden, they send the, they send this top, top, top of the elite soldiers. When it's time to go get them dudes, um, you got to, when they, when they start naming, when it's time to go get those dudes and those people that the countries need to get, they send, they send their top soldiers. And if you guys top soldier, but you got to go through top training. When you when you when you consider yourself God's top soldier, you got to go through top training, cause you got to be able to be resilient. You got to be able to go through tough things and not break. And sometimes God hires you to make you strong, so when He puts you out there, He can trust you to stand. Now, hair still ain't gonna limit me, man. It don't matter if I'm bald. It don't matter if I have dreads. The Lord will use me. All right, guys. I'm glad. I'm glad it was a great explanation. All right, guys. Yeah, stay hidden. Listen, stay hidden as long as you can. Because the lights are hot. When you get on that stage, those lights are hot. And everybody's eyes are on you. You got to live above reproach. Listen, stay hidden as long as possible. Because when you're in that spotlight, the lights get hotter and the people's eyes get bigger. And they start looking at you. Obey God. Stay hidden. Love you guys. Hey, man. Uh, what, was, what was I going to say? Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, going on tour this fall with my brother Rashawn Copeland, man. If you want us to bring us to your city, your country, your state, your church, your conference, make sure you go to unpluggedcharlotte.gmail.com. Book us. If you want to book me, you want to come out, you want to bring me out to your, your college, you can bring me out there. You can bring Rashawn out there. Also, if you want to help support Unplug, man, you can donate as well. Um, make sure you share this. You watch it on YouTube. Let me know where you watch from. Share this with all your friends that is going through this. I want to come to London. We want, we're going to do our best to get out there. Um, 
That's all I got to say. Love you guys. Until next time. Peace. Also, send me questions. If you want me to do periscopes, answering your questions, or you want me to go deeper on a topic, please let me know. Facebook me. Tweet me. Um, um, Instagram me. Connect with me some kind of way. Give me some topic ideas. I want to be able to hit you guys where you need them. All right, guys. Love you guys. Peace. Love y'all.